All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. Welcome to our office space, uh, Peak Capital Trading. Uh, Andrew, how you doing, man? I'm Looking doing good. well. Market is reaping, and obviously we are having a good time in the market. That makes me very, very, very excited looking at the market and how it's actually reaping right now. Uh, I see. I'm, I'm looking at the chat right now. Carlos is there. How you doing, Carlos? Good to see you here, man. Good to see you. What a, what a day. We got tons of economic data coming in. We got the retail numbers uh, coming in. Uh, Fed uh, Chairman Jerome Powell was uh, speaking, so tons of stuff has happened. Today was a really volatile, choppy day as well. We traded it in the market. Uh, let's walk through our agenda really quickly of what we want to discuss today, uh, and uh, we'll get it going from there. So, of course, Fed's uh, speaking and the market in general, so if people can see my screen. Uh, then we're going we're to have a segment where we talk about 13F filings. Now, 13F filings is something anybody managing more than $100 million in the U.S. has to do these filings every quarter, and that shows their positions. Are they shorting the market? Are they long certain names? You can get a lot of information. We're going to talk about Dr. Barry uh, from the Big Short. Uh, of what he want to do when he's shorting Apple and why he's shorting Apple and things in that nature. Uh, we're going to talk about President Biden and Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Uh, lots of interesting stuff has happened over there and upcoming market events and earnings. Uh, Andrew, I'll start with you. Let's talk about market today. What are you seeing? Uh, what are your kind of insight about today? And then we'll take it from there. So the most of the uh, you know good news that came today, at least what I found was China is finally easing down on lockdowns. As you know, there's almost two months that they're very chaotic lockdowns in Shanghai and the part of Beijing, and that will impact the supply chain issues definitely this summer. And apparently they you know, eased down a little bit on the lockdowns. I have one of, the fr my, one of my friends that actually uh, is in lockdown. It's been two months, crazy. <laughs> so what we are seeing right now- Andrew, I wanna to touch on that, because that's hilarious. You, they, your friend uh, is actually a running coach, yeah. and he sent you a picture, he's getting so chubby, even though he's a running coach, right? Yeah, so imagine it's been like almost 55 days that they, they can't even come out of their uh, complex. It's just crazy. Mm -hmm. This is not something that you can do in the Western societies, but China can't do that because of the nature of the government that they have. But regardless, that supply chain issues will catch up with the market. Yeah. Uh, not yet, but probably in the summer we're going to see some uh, shock on that. So the news came out and also the Bank of China is uh, doing quantitative easing and the monetary policy is actually to bring down the uh, interest rates so to support their financial market. Oh, really? And uh, that's why we saw a huge gap up on BABA. But the question is, can this rally stay? I mean, I was expecting a sell-off uh, later during the day, but apparently it's holding and uh, there is a little bit of risk on situation in the market right now. Yeah, we did sell off uh, when, when Powell was speaking. Uh, we're going to get into details of what he said and whether or not market liked it or not. Uh, and then we kind of bounced back. So that was, that was kind of interesting on why, why, why we kind of bounced back. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, I think Powell, Powell mentioned it as well, is uh, with, with the economy. Andrew, you said in the chat room today, it was really interesting. You said the stock market is pricing in a recession, but the bond market is, isn't. And we've seen that, right? Like the stock market, all, most of the indices are down 20, 25 percent, 30 percent, whereas the yield curve is no longer flat or inverted. So, you, so the bond market has kind of adjusted and has shaken off the, the recession talk, whereas the stock market is very bearish. Do you think we've oversold uh, you know, nobody knows that's a billion dollar question, but definitely market is in oversold condition, but it can't stay in oversold condition for longer. Definitely has overpriced the heavy recession. Mm -hmm. And uh, because this recession, if it's coming, it's different from other recessions. Yeah. We're having uh, inflation that is very, very consistent. Yeah. I mean, in the past, all we had all of the recoveries in the last 10 years, and the mother of all of the drops was the pandemic, March 2020. But policymakers and feds could provide a recovery, you know, a great V-shaped recovery. Yeah. But this is different from those ones because right, what we're seeing right now is actually the inflation playing a role in that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I think the stock market has kind of overpriced a recession. Maybe we don't go into a deep recession, but there are definitely talks of recession. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, feel free, if, you, if you've got a question for myself and Andrew, feel free to use the chat function. We are monitoring it really closely. Uh, so uh, ask us a question. Uh, Andrew, I saw this today and I talked about it, in, uh, it, it during my time in the chat room. This is a sentiment uh, right now where you can see the ratio of leverage long. So this is kind of your TQQ, you know, your TNA, uh, your SPXL versus the short ETF. So like, you know, SQQ, things in that nature. You know, at early in January when market was making all-time all, all high, the ratio was six to one. So there were six times more volume going into TQQ versus SQQ. Now that ratio is at one. So the sentiment has shifted dramatically. We're a lot more bearish, uh, but usually when the sentiment shifts so much uh, to, 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 to another side, when you have this type of swing, that usually signals the bottom is near as well, right? Because that means the excess leverage in the market has been a little flushed out, so things are back in kind of kind of normal. So that was really, really uh, interesting as well. So Ardi, you think that the excess leverage has already been uh, shaked off from the system now? Uh, tough to say. I mean, we, we're seeing a little bit of um, both sides of it. So we, we looked at balances on credit cards and the credit card balances has increased month over month. So in terms of consumer, consumers are taking on more leverage. But, you know, the whole, the whole society, the capitalistic society is based on leverage. So not necessarily leverage is a bad, bad thing. Um, but in terms of short term speculation, that bubble has popped. So and, and we can see that clearly. So I can't say overall leverage in the market, but I can say short-term speculation. We went from six times um, long uh, leverage ETFs to only one time. So we can see these type of speculation bubbles has definitely burst. Yeah, excellent. That's uh, that's very interesting to know. The leverage is is uh, is something that is definitely traders should be careful about that. Sal T is asking you a really interesting question. Uh, can you tell if there's significant institutional buying happening this week? Andrew, have you seen any data? Uh, if not, I can speak to it a little Actually, bit. Actually, I haven't, uh, but it's very interesting to know it's what's the uh, capital flow into the indexes, especially from institutions. Yeah, I think, I think this week, Sal T, we, we saw some net inflows, so people are buying. Another thing you could do is you could take a look at 13F filings and see who's buying. So as an example, I think... Um, I believe Buffett did about 600 million uh, uh, of purchases uh, this past quarter. So overall, people are buying. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, valuations are starting to matter. Institutions seems to be uh, starting to get into the stocks. So the market closed. IWM closed three percent. Apple 2.5 percent. Spy 2 percent. Uh, so very very heavy at close at the high of the day, which is a good sign. ARC uh, closed 5% at $43, um, Tesla closed 5%. Is there any uh, earning that we have that uh, we want to take a look at? Any uh, important earnings right now? Uh, not right now. I don't think after hours was any important earnings, but we had um, Home Depot and Walmart, I believe. Oh, yeah. uh, both of them before open, before market open, uh, released earnings. Walmart, I believe, gapped down. Uh, I don't know what Home Depot did, but the numbers from Home Depot wasn't really uh, strong either. Their sales was up, but their volume in terms of transaction was down about 8%. So you know the sales was up only because of the pricing increases. So if you look at it on a real term, uh, they didn't really uh, grow as much. But because there's so much inflation on a nominal term, it seems like the revenue grew. Yeah, so Home Depot gapped up. Uh, significantly this morning about four percent and then during the day sold off and even though market was really strong today really couldn't hold it went it actually even red during the day as you see in my chart and then it came back up close 1.5 percent yeah very very interesting yeah absolutely and I saw this chart as well I thought I thought this this uh, this chart is really <laughs> interesting as well in terms of where we are we're about a 20 percent drawdown on on SPX and when you compare it with historic uh, bear market, I mean, the, the 1937, the 07, 09 global financial crisis, uh, the dot-com bubble, there's a long way to go. I mean, by no means I'm saying that, hey, this is going to continue. Uh, but in terms of historic uh, drawdowns, uh, it puts things into perspective. So be really mindful of your appetite for risk taking in this environment. Yeah, that's, that's very true. I mean, the, the most interesting part, in my opinion, is the... Uh, 2000 uh, to 2002 crash, the Nasdaq uh, 
uh, dot com bubble. But uh, you know, I don't know how close we are into that situation. But these companies like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, the Nasdaq uh, index, uh, you know, these companies are producing a lot of uh, revenue, and these are definitely not the same companies that they were back in 2000. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Amazon was losing money in O2. Uh, they're like a free cash flow machine right now. Another data snack that I saw that was, I, I thought is quite interesting is 377 times this quarter, management has cited inflation. You know, we talked yesterday, remember we were having a conversation, we said, hey, which one is more important, inflation or inflation expectation? And the key for a market is inflation expectation. When there's an expectation that prices are gonna rise, then it become normalized, everybody raise prices. Uh, so that's one of the things Fed's trying to get under control is actually inflation expectation. Uh, and during a Fed talk, actually, Powell said uh, they're willing to go above the natural policy rate just to get the inflation out of control, that, uh, in, in the control, which means they're willing to go up to maybe two and a half, three and a half percent um, just to bring down the inflation uh, on a Fed's fund rate. Uh, feds have uh, the mandate to control the inflation right now, but more than that, Fed's, uh, you know, Federal Reserve Act of 1913, one of the biggest tasks that the U.S. Central Bank has is the financial stability. If controlling the inflation comes at uh, the cost of the financial instability, I'm sure Feds would change their policy. And they have, uh, I think uh, J Jay Powell mentioned that they're ready to change their policy if necessary because yeah. the financial stability is more important than that. If the market is continue melting down like the way it is and raising capital becomes so difficult from the public market, it's, you know, is, you know, it's reasonable to expect that the Feds might actually change their policy toward that. Yeah, definitely. Financial stability. The financial stability report is something Fed releases every month. So if anybody's interested, that's also a really good read. Uh, could be a little complicated, but uh, overall, really, really great stuff. Uh, we talked about it in our chat room a lot uh, on, on my sessions, at least on Tuesday and Thursday. So uh, if you're not part of our community, feel free to give it a try. Um, definitely on that. And shall we uh, switch over to some of the 13F filings or do you want to keep talking about? No, that's great. 13F filing, you, you mentioned that's very, very interesting. For those of you who don't know, 13F filings, for any fund that is over $100 million, I think, yeah. they have to release quarterly uh, the positions that they're having and uh, that gives a really really good look into what big biggest traders and investors uh, are actually holding and thinking and that's a re giving a really good uh, sentiment and Ali, you were Michael Berry, Dr. Michael Berry for those of you who don't know him he was the first person who uh, found that there's a bubble in the housing market and created th those credit default swaps to actually short the housing market back in 2006. Yeah. So, you know, he's a very famous short seller. He has uh, shorted Tesla before many times, a couple of times, and, you know, uh, he's a very controversial person. So, Adi, you want to talk about his 13F filings? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of the interesting information that I got from this 13F filing is about 18% of his pro, uh, portfolio. And again, note that this is as of... Uh, uh, it basically the last day of the quarter which which would be march right this would be out of uh, last day of march so uh, keep in mind this is not updated he might have closed this put already don't go and short apple just because dr berry has so keep that in mind but about 18 percent of his portfolio was apple puts so he's shorting apple and some are speculating hey the reason he's doing that is because the china lockdown um, iPhone sales in China is estimated to drop by 45%, which is a massive drop because of the lockdown. No one's really going out and shopping, right? So some are saying it's because of that, but some are also arguing, hey, he's long Google, he's long Facebook. So this is just part of a hedge against technology. So if the market or NASDAQ uh, sold off maybe another 30, 40%, similar to what happened in uh, 0102, he wants to be able to hedge and kind of support his investment. So I don't know what to read of it, and that's kind of a downfall of these type of uh, 13F filings when you're trying to make investment decisions based on these because they're delayed. Uh, but it, it's definitely interesting. Um, what do you think, Andrew? Why do you think the reason is? Do you think he's hedging, or is it is he's kind of betting against Apple uh, for China slowdown? It, it, it might be very well hedging. Obviously, Apple is a company that uh, it's really, really difficult to short. It's a very solid company, has a huge uh, 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 cash reserve, and you know, doing a lot of buybacks. So there's a natural uh, 
uh, force of pushing the price higher by the company itself, by the buybacks that they're having. Yeah. So is that, from what I see, do I, and you know, Apple and Google, so he has also 10% Google in his portfolio of Alphabet. So and Apple and Google are kind of the big tech companies, kind of correlated, they're both in, uh, into tech sector. It has 10% Facebook as well. So yeah. what I see here is the position is majority long right now. Yeah. Uh, so this could be a hedge or might be a very, very short-term position. If it was a short-term position, he probably, would have, covered. He probably covered it yeah. because last week Apple had a 10% drop. Yeah. And uh, you know, Apple was one of the last uh, uh, big companies that got hit by this bear market and uh, a lot of people say when the king is dead now then you know you, you you're going to start a new uh, era pretty much every big company got hit uh, in the bear market and apple was the last man standing and it got hit and we'll want to see if this is a new beginning right now for the market uh, or not yeah uh, one of the other interesting statistics that i found from the 13f filings was uh you know the big the companies that had saw the biggest drop uh, where Twitter, Hood, so a lot of funds are dumping Twitter, a lot of funds are uh, dumping Hood, so they don't really believe that the deal is probably going through. And some of the biggest gainers in the 13F filing, so the companies that a lot of fund managers were adding position to, AMD was one of them, XLF, which is financial, was one of them. Uh, you know, kind of interesting, and a lot of Chinese stocks, so DD, um, things in that nature and of course government bond right so golf T which is treasury so a lot of money were piling up into uh, treasuries yeah that's uh, that's definitely very interesting I mean AMD had a really amazing run this uh, this morning I personally traded below hundred dollars and I see that it's now actually up at ten percent nine percent at one or two the semiconductor sector has been beaten up really, really bad. NVIDIA is now the sixth biggest company in the U.S. You know, from the highs of over 300, now actually 360, it went down to $160. That was a huge NVIDIA? Drop. NVIDIA yeah. is now actually with market cap. is cool, you know, I think it's the sixth largest company in the United States. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Andrew, uh, when uh, Powell was speaking today, something really interesting happened. He talked about... Uh, something you've been talking about for about four or five months as well, of this uh, reverse globalization. Uh, and he's, he, 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 he thought that this is going to be one of the forces that is going to hinder uh, inflation in the short term, but eventually help inflation calm down in the long term. Uh, so that was, that was really interesting. So one of, the, one of the reasons he believes the job market is so tight is because we're seeing some of the jobs coming back into the United States and some of this reverse globalization. So I thought that was also an interesting comment. I think the you know the global economy in the next five years definitely move toward the reverse globalization, because uh, you cannot afford the, this situation again that a country just shut down the you know uh, natural gas pipes or electricity to you or China locks down the whole country and affects everywhere in the world. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. 100% agree. Uh, members, members, Airfun is saying AMD was on fire today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hopefully you did trade it. It was definitely crazy. Uh, lots of volatility. Uh, it's nice to see a little bit of uh, kind of bounce in the semiconductors. They were extremely sold off. Uh, I know some of our developers here, uh, you can see them behind Andrew. They were buying some SOXL for their long-term portfolio. They were not having a good time. <laughs> uh, so I'm glad they did it. Hey, Rachel, welcome. Uh, John is here in the chat. <laughs> John, hope you're doing well. Yeah, so uh, if you want to know, um, you know, a lot of this information, we're actually posting it on tradingterminal.com. We recently have uh, this update on it. So, you know, the, the charting is, has been updated. And uh, let me actually connect to my account with that. The charting has been updated on uh, Trading Terminal. So for those of you who are interested to get a little bit of access to some of the information that we are having is, uh, um, you know, looking into uh, our trading terminal. Uh, Andrew, can you take a look at uh, Walmart uh, on, your, on your trading terminals? Uh, someone's asking about Walmart saying, uh, what are your thoughts on Walmart price action today considering historic sell-off? So yeah, so definitely let's take a look at Walmart uh, price action in five minutes. Let's see what we are having. So Walmart sold off heavily, yeah. and it's down 11% actually. That's a very, very interesting. So Walmart is down 11%, and on a daily chart, what, let's take a look at the weekly chart or daily chart. Um, yeah, it's gapped down. Walmart is, was one of the companies that actually had uh, 
uh, oh, whereas it was at all-time high, even yeah. though we had this uh, inflation situation, it was at all-time high. But right now we're seeing is 11 percent. I don't know exactly what happened uh, for their earning, but uh, it's back uh, to the January 2021. I think yeah, it lost the gains the, the whole last year. That's that's really a little bit of a big drop. Yeah, I think um, I don't know. I didn't actually take a look at the earnings, but. Uh, the, what what caught my eyes was that the market was expecting kind of a five percent move for Walmart, the option market, and the move was actually about ten percent. So uh, if you had a straddle on Walmart, you would have made money, which is really shocking because usually these uh, staple names don't move as much. Uh, but that was interesting and kind of finished the day near low of day. Uh, so uh, very interesting. Um, uh, David, if you're an option trader, what I would recommend is wait a couple of days and see if the bottom is in and then you can set up a credit spread maybe expiry next week or, 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 or a week from now and kind of take advantage of that uh, short term um, short term bottom. So here's what I would basically recommend if people can see my screen is if this bottom here for now holds, maybe sell some puts here and buy some puts to kind of cover yourself. So run a vertical spread, a bullish vertical spread. Uh, for hopes of kind of consolidation and maybe a push higher. But you have to wait uh, a little bit. Uh, would a Russian debt default impact the market? Uh, definitely, for sure. It would, it would definitely impact the market. Uh, anytime there is a default, doesn't matter. Uh, it always impact. It, it has a cascade effect. So if any government bonds, uh, which is highly ranked, uh, default, then a lot of funds have to dump it because they have a mandate to hold uh, investment grade uh, securities in their in their investments. So some pension funds, some uh, sovereign wealth fund, and once they start dumping, it create a cascade effect in in, in terms of whole economy. So uh, definitely, uh, you just in order to get a really good answer, you have to probably see uh, how big that that market is. It might not really impact the U.S. market, but uh, it will definitely impact the market for sure. Yeah, so remember guys, we do also have the news page on the trading terminal uh, and uh, also breaking news squawk that is actually t speaking. So if you want to check it out, you can go and sign up and uh, you know, feel free to use it. They also find the best Twitter uh, channels that they're providing uh, real time useful information like Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, Market Watch, Zero Hedge, uh, there that you can actually uh, look into that as well. Um, you know, I'm sharing my screen right now, you know, I mean, the, um, a trading terminal news page and that's a good source for you you get a lot of this information in real time and also we have one section what is moving why, why is it moving and you know have this uh, breaking news right now we have to see the container stores TCS is trading higher after the company reported better than expected uh, results for the last quarter yeah exactly and, and and the great thing about that feature Andrew is that the ticker is at the bottom of it so if yeah. somebody want to trade based on that they can they can immediately grab the ticker name and then start trading yeah exactly and, and if you click on that it, it can actually go into uh, the charting and you know you get the information about that uh, David no the news feed is actually real time we've worked really hard uh, to make sure the news feed is, is, is as real time as possible uh, especially the squawk box that we have which is uh, provided by Benzinga you know uh, real time breaking news uh, no delay absolutely not awesome yeah awesome that's that's perfect that's good to hear Salty um, Andrew, shall we get into a little bit of chit chat about Twitter, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos? Yeah, hundred percent. That's one of the funniest uh, situations that are happening all around us. And this Elon Musk, it's just it, this guy is amazing. I love this guy, and you know, I just follow him, and it's really fun what he's doing. Sometimes I'm wondering if he's doing all of this stuff, you know, on purpose just to make fun with the whole system. Yeah, so he basically, it, it's very rarely that him and Jeff Bezos agree on something, but it seems like right now they're agreeing that that administration is not doing a good enough job, uh, and they're trying to, especially in regards to inflation. So, you know, he tweeted, Biden's mistake is that he thinks he was elected to transform the country, but actually everyone just wanted less drama. Uh, and then uh, the All In podcast is... Uh, you know, a couple of these uh, Silicon Valley guys uh, podcasts. He came to their podcast, and this is what he had to say. I want to play this video because uh, I think it's quite interesting. Let me see if I can get the. Hopefully, people can hear me. This is what he had to say. 
Man, I just wanted to tell what by the joy of controller prank. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, like the, 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 the real president is whoever controls the teleprompter. Uh, the real president is whoever that controls the teleprompter. That's what he had to say, and this is from today. What is the teleprompter? The teleprompter, you know, that thing that you have where it says what you have to oh, say yeah. and you're reading from it. <laughs> so it says the real pro uh, pro uh, president is uh, who is uh, reading the teleprompter, which, which is quite interesting. Um, and then Jeff Bezos had something to say as well. Uh, you know, President Biden said, you want to bring down inflation, let's make sure the wealthy uh, corporations are paying their tax, their fair share. And, you know, Jeff Bezos took that personal and he talked about how, you know, a lot of fiscal expansion is causing the inflation, uh, raising the corporate taxes uh, is not going to help basically tame the inflation. Yeah, so what he essentially mentioned that you should not take the very serious issue like inflation that has hurt mostly the middle class and make it political. Yeah. Like for example, because the inflation is high, then let's start taxing the rich and taxing the successful corporations. What Jeff Bezos was saying that these two issues are equally important, but connecting this together and giving this impression that taxation mm -hmm. of the corporations actually bring down the um, inflation is not a correct argument and it should be flagged as miscorrect information as someone that is uh, published by Twitter. Tw by t Twitter. Yeah, because Twitter does that, right? Twitter does it's, that, it's like for example, vaccines yeah. and you know a lot of uh, other stuff. If you, they have the fact checkers, they're working with some fact checkers website. Yeah. And what they do is they say, you know, this is uh, disputed or there's arguments against that. So nobody really knows if you start taxing the successful corporations, you actually bring down the inflation or you're you know, sending the economy into a recession. So this is something that should be argued, but you know, it shouldn't be in a short toy, according to Jeff Bezos. And the White House, the response, as you're sharing your screen, was that Jeff Bezos is just angry because the White House uh, you know, met with some of the union organizers, uh, the leaders of some union organizers, including Amazon and the White House, and they're supporting their uh, unionization. Yeah, I think both Bezos and uh, Elon are kind of anti anti uh, union, um, and for sure it kind of uh, and 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 this administration is kind of pro union, so um, it's kind of normal for them to have this uh, this type of disagreements. It's quite interesting. Uh, a lot a lot's also going on about you know the Elon uh, the bot problem of Twitter mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Andrew, what, what is your thoughts? My thinking is it's, it's kind of bizarre for me because, hey, have you not done any type of due diligence before committing $45 billion of capital? It's something maybe the bankers should have done for you. The analysts maybe know how much uh, bot problem there is. Uh, but what do you think about these bot issues? And he's saying that more than 20% of Twitter users are bots. My honest opinion is that he's trying to either uh, bring the price down or actually bail out from the deal. Because they're accusing, he's accusing them that uh, you know you your information that you submitted to SEC is wrong. Yeah. You know, it's more than five percent, and now he's throwing a very very dangerous ball at Twitter. In my opinion, again, the, nobody really knows what's happening in his mind. A, he either wants to bring down the price significantly, or he wants to just get out of the deal because you know the, Elon Musk hasn't taken over the Twitter yet. He just has an option of buying Twitter at $54. And the cost for that option is $2 billion. Yeah. If he doesn't buy that, then he has to pay $2 billion. So now he's coming up with an excuse not to buy Twitter and say, you guys lied about the number of the active users, which does impact the valuation of your company. Yeah. Uh, that's my opinion. I think it might not be successful, especially the, you, know, you, you see the price of Tesla has dropped significantly. It's trading now uh, below $800, and yeah. that's very, very dangerous for Elon Musk because he wants to get the loan from uh, Tesla shares. So I think one of the very big issues that we are seeing here is that he wants to bail out or he wants to bring down the cost significantly. Yeah. But as you mentioned, I think he, he's a smart guy. He probably would have known something like that, but he would just want to use that card right now. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. I, I asked him on Twitter, uh, mm. and you know, he's, he's a very popular person. I asked him on Twitter, Have, haven't you done any type of due diligence uh, before committing 40 billion? Uh, you, you would assume you should have. And then people got so angry at me, uh, thinking that I, like, I want to bring Elon down. No, it was just a simple question. But the stock has gave back all the gains. So 
currently trading at 38.18 if you think the deal is going to go through here's some free money for you the deal price is 54.20 so this is like a 25 percent jump uh, if the deal actually goes through kind of an arbitrage but obviously market is saying there's no way that this deal would go through at 54.20 that's at least what the market is saying uh, which is quite interesting another thing that would really caught my eyes andrew is on friday there was massive volume of puts that was being bought on twitter so either somebody knew something that Elon's going to say something about this. I, I, I don't want to say insider trading, but there were some unusual option activities on Twitter, uh, which, by the way, we're going to add. It's on one of the pages we're going to add to our trading terminal uh, called unusual option activities. We can help uh, traders make type of, these type of decisions. But whoever that bought some puts on Twitter made a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, it's, if I have the power of the Twitter account that I can say something and move the market, and if I say something in a bus to someone or in my cab driver, yeah. uh, people can't take advantage of that. And there's no way that somebody can actually track that. Yeah. Elon Musk has an obligation to share every news that he wants to do about uh, Tesla with the legal team at the Tesla. That's the uh, part of the agreement that he had with the SEC. Mm -hmm. And uh, SEC is actually on him that he has breached that uh, settlement agreement that they had or multiple times. Yeah. So he, this is the guy that his Twitter account can explode uh, accounts. Yeah. And SEC knows that. So Twitter, but he doesn't have any obligation about the Twitter, but he's yeah. doing that. I don't know. I mean, uh, Twitter is a very powerful thing. 100 million followers is very powerful. And being most uh, you know successful entrepreneur on the planet uh, gives you some power, definitely. Yeah, uh, definitely. I don't know why, but I personally still have kind of a feeling that he's gonna he's gonna make this still happen. So I feel like there's some kind of arbitrage opportunity. I mean, of course, this is not an investment investment advice, but it's kind of my feeling. I think his ego is too big for him not to back out out of this deal. Uh, he just want to get a better price. Um, but then again, like some of the biggest holders of Twitter is like Saudi's uh, sovereign wealth fund. So they're very strict in terms of their valuation and kind of the return profile they expect as well. Uh, it will be, be really interesting. Let's go to our calendar page on our trading terminal and see what earnings are coming up. I know tomorrow morning there's Lightspeed uh, is reporting earning. Um, that, that might be a mover. Uh, Cisco, Target, Lowe's. So a lot of these staple names are also reporting. Um, I don't know if Neo is actually reporting. Um, Deer could be interesting. Foot Locker could be interesting. So still, still we're at the, the kind of the final stages of this earning season, but still lots of interesting uh, names are reporting. Yeah, awesome. So it's definitely uh, you know interesting to see the earning season is almost done. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, we're gonna wait another three months to get another round of uh, crazy. Uh, earning for the market, but definitely the volatility that comes from the market these days, uh, you know, we, we, we are not running out of any material uh, for trading stocks in play. The most interesting part is Bitcoin that is really struggling at $30,000. The collapse of uh, stable coins, uh, Luna, has uh, put a really big question mark on the, va you know, uh, legality and trustability of these stable coins and yeah. it's very interesting to see if the regulations are coming after these stable coins or not yeah yeah uh, you hear the word uh, Ponzi a lot these days the Ponzi scheme the 20% uh, guaranteed returns and uh, and all that uh, all that things that that were kind of kind of coming up with them uh, I always tell people if, if, if it sounds too good to be true it, it majority of the time is so you want to be very careful uh, with your investment but it will be, be interesting to see. I'm um, just looking at the sectors today. Everything closed. Uh, technology was the strongest. Material, financial, rebounded. Consumer discretionary rebounded. And then the, the staple names that were really strong yesterday, they were kind of uh, weaker today. So um, that was interesting as well. Uh, so these type of sessions, we want to do them three times a week on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday right before the market close if there's an earning we're going to talk about earning if there is any news coming out like Fed's talking things in that nature we're going to spend a lot of time discussing them so if you're a trader you're an investor a market participant uh, you're going to get a lot of value out of it make sure to subscribe to our channel uh, turn on the notification so you get notified uh, every Friday Andrew and I are going to go on Twitter 
uh, interact with everyone. So if people have, uh, have questions, they can get their questions answered. Um, yeah, lots of lots of interesting stuff is happening. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Um, and use the chat function to ask us any questions. Yeah, so definitely. So we have a couple of tools uh, for those of you who are on uh, YouTube that you can use. Trading Terminal is definitely something uh, that uh, you can use. Sign up. It's for free. Uh, StockTradingSimulator.com, which is part of Trading Terminal, uh, that you can actually go and trade on a simulator or the U.S. stock market. Uh, it's another free tool for you to use. And of course, if you want to be part of our community, trading live in the morning, uh, you know, we start from the pre-market show on YouTube live here. And we have the community that you can sign up. There's a link that if you want to join us for free, obviously, uh, we welcome all of you in our community. Yeah. Yeah, amazing, 100%. Uh, Samit uh, is asking, did, did you already discuss about today's FOMC? Yes, Samit, we spent the first uh, half of the show talking about the FOMC, what Powell said. But just to uh, brief you in really quickly, is basically he said he's going to do whatever it takes to bring the inflation down, even if it means going beyond the natural policy rate. Now, the natural policy rate is usually on par with long-term inflation, which would mean that Fed's fund rate should be about 2.5%, 3%. Uh, but he said he's willing to go beyond that. So that was kind of a hawkish. The market sold off a little bit, uh, but then it, it, it rebounded. He also talked about empl uh, employment, and he said the labor market is too tight. He wants a little bit of slack. So uh, basically, inadvertently, he said he's okay with people losing their job a little bit just to cool down uh, the market, the, the job market. Yeah, because more than, uh, you know, there's, there are a couple of things that is very important is, uh, you know, the high employment is very important, but also the cost of employment is important. If there is a fight over employees everywhere in services or in, you know, in science and technology, then the cost of employments are going to go up for the companies. And the companies are transferring these additional costs to the customers, which adds into the inflation. You know, we had the inflations in the past uh, only for goods. And now this inflation is moving towards services as well. You know, the services, there's no supply chain disruption in China for services. It's mostly the human capital that uh, are having the issue. Therefore, I think the uh, Federal Reserve wants a little bit of a slack in even the job market as well. So you shouldn't really be on full, full the capacity, 100% employment, because then the cost of employment is going to go up and go up and go up uh, for the companies. And this cost will be transferred to customers. Therefore, yes, they want to slow down economy, you know, you can't, you know, and that's why, you know, the business cycles has always been part of the economy that, you know, you have the period of prosperity and then the feds have to uh, slow down the economy. Some businesses will go down, unfortunately, and then the, another cycle starts with, you know, with the, uh, you know, loosening of financial um, uh, conditions and then the new businesses will come. And this cycle goes on, goes on, goes on. and. You know, the, one of the people that who, you know, mentioned that was actually Karl Marx in 1865 in his book Das Kapital, which is the German, he's a German philosopher, but he mentioned that these are inevitable part of the capitalism. Yeah, yeah, 100%. If you can see my, uh, my screen, I, I, I just put something uh, down as Andrew was speaking, and, and it's called frictional unemployment. And actually, Fed really likes this. This means just you know, a little bit of friction in, in, in the job market, people losing their job uh, for whatever reason. That little bit of frictional um, unemployment, and this is not because like, their skills are not good enough or they're under skilled. It's just part of the economy, part of the pain. It's something that Fed actually prefers and likes to, uh, likes to see. Someone asked about RDBX. Uh, it's up uh, quite nicely, 35%. It seems like it is on the news. Uh, not really sure. Uh, maybe you can go to our news page on Trading Terminal and search the ticker and see what the news was about. Uh, obviously, it was positive. What's uh, the ticker? I can uh, RDBX. Redbox Entertainment. Yeah. Uh, what are we having? Um, so there is nothing really in the news page right now. But it's, uh, it's a penny a stock. These penny a stocks uh, are prone to a lot of pump and dump. If one big player, one big institutional investor, you know, try to do something on that, it can just trigger the short squeeze or a crazy move. So in penny a stocks, anything less than five million, uh, sorry, five dollars, uh, uh, you know, we, we call them a penny a stock. And the float is only 2.8 million shares. So this is, this is, you know, these kind of moves are not unusual uh, these, in these penny a stocks, which in variable traders and peak capital, we stay away from trading these stocks. Yeah, yeah. 
No, 100%, definitely. Uh, you know, I think it was a great show, Andrew. Uh, we'll, we'll wait a couple more minutes if any more uh, questions come in. Uh, if not, we'll see you tomorrow for another amazing show. We're going to discuss in more details uh, some of these earnings. Uh, some of our trades and let us know how do you like this show to be done you know we're, we're open to feedback um, we want to do this every week we want to be consistent with it uh, so let us know what you want to see out of this show and uh, definitely we'll, we'll try to deliver awesome well thank you so much guys yeah and for those of you who are watching we appreciate if you like uh, and subscribe to our channel you know we really like the thumbs up you know I see 128 people right now if you can give the you know, 10, 20 more likes, that would be really interesting if you are not a bot and if you are actually a human because uh, <laughs> you don't know it in the social media. Yeah, you, you think uh, YouTube also has a bot problem? Oh, I'm sure it has. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah, definitely. No, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. And, and let us know, email us uh, about, uh, you know, the format of the show if there's any changes. And feel free to follow us on, on Twitter. Andrew, your handle is... Uh, yeah, at Verbal Traders. That's yeah. my handle. And I'm going to actually post it in the chat room. And your handle is uh, Ardi. So I'm going to also post uh, yours as well. So, you know, we, we you know, it's, feel free to send us emails, uh, DMs, and tag us. And we'd love to answer your questions. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> John saying I've been described as a bot. I, I always question that, John, as well. You know, I'm like too funny to be a real, <laughs> pretty real person. Can a real person can't have this much sense of humor? John is definitely a very funny person. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good afternoon, and I'll see you tomorrow morning in the chat, guys. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks Bye -bye. for tuning in.